Do you have curtain panels that need a little color? Lay your curtain on a flat surface and smooth out any wrinkles or folds. Take a plastic bag, gather the bottom of the bag together and tie it into a tight knot. Then turn the plastic bag inside out so the knot is on the inside. Gather the middle of the bag together and blow into the bottom of the bag. With a paintbrush, brush fabric paint onto the bottom of the inflated plastic bag. Press the paint covered bag bubble onto the fabric panel. Continue to press painted flowers randomly on the curtain panel. Give your flowers some depth by repeating this process with a coordinating color. Next time you are at Walmart, grab a large plastic bowl or pasta bowl and a cereal bowl. Flip the large bowl over and apply a ring of clear adhesive glue around the perimeter of the bowl bottom to secure the two bowls together. Take some decorative rope and hot glue it around the center where the two bowls meet. Fill this bowl with water and add some floating candles. Let's head over to Dollar Tree and we're gonna grab a paper towel holder. Let's all run down to the hardware store and grab us a wood round. We gotta sand the edges, got to condition the wood. Let it dry about 30 minutes to an hour. Once it dries, it's time to put on some stain. We're gonna get three of those paper towel holders and we're gonna set them in place. What we need to do is paint them. Once we get it all painted, let it dry. Now we gotta curve the edges a little bit and bend them. Don't bend them too far, just get them a little 20 degrees and we're gonna do all three at the same angle. Now we're gonna put them in place on the bottom of our wood round. And I'm gonna take these little electric hooks that I got out of the hardware store and I'm gonna put four all the way around each side of these circles here. And once I got them marked, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill. I'm gonna go ahead and put little tiny screws in and hold these clips in place. And I'm gonna put a little dab of hot glue and then I'm gonna take some twine. I'm gonna set it there and then I'm gonna start wrapping it all the way around. Head to Amazon to purchase 12 by 10 glass wall mirror tiles. Take mirrors outdoors and lay them on a protective surface. Use water to spray all over the mirrors with a spray bottle and then take the gold and antique pewter spray paint to spray along the outside edges of the mirror tiles. Allow time to dry and then wipe them off with a towel to see the aged finish. Open the pack of wood slices and pick out eight. Take outdoors to spray paint flat black on both sides. Use a level and painter's tape to create a guide to attach the mirrors in an ordered way on the wall. Take adhesive squares and glue that's included with the mirrors to attach to the back of each tile. Then place along the painter tape guideline and work horizontally and then vertically applying the tiles securely. Once the mirrors have been attached to the wall securely, take the same glue from attaching the mirrors and use it on the back of the wood slices to place in the inside corners of the mirror tiles. For today's project, I'm going to head down to my local hardware store. I'm going to grab some closet poles that expand. I'm also going to grab some brackets. These poles are really cool. One is larger than the other, but on the end, I've got a cap with a screw. I need to take that off, measure with these poles, put them together from floor to ceiling and mark the height of my ceiling. And what I'm going to do is I need to put these two together. So I'm going to mark it exactly the height I need and I need a pre-drill and then I'm going to attach it back again with the screw. This is going to be perfect size that I need. The next step is I'm going to take the smallest drill bit I can find and pre-drill. Don't push too hard, but you're going to put that first screw in, but don't go all the way because we're going to put that bracket on and slide it into place. Then we can take a pencil and mark exactly where our next screw needs to go. Put the bracket in again, like we did before, and then we're going to go ahead and put the screw in. Once we get that first one in, we're going to put the second one. Let's head on inside now. We're going to put that bracket that comes with the poles into the ceiling and then we're going to pop it into place. Now let's take some twine because we're going to hang some plants. My daughter purchased a large television and once you know it, her old TV stand was too small. All we really needed for this project was molding and an unfinished wooden top. I laid the board on top of the stand and measured to center it. Using my miter saw, I cut the molding to size. I pre-hammered finishing nails into the molding, added wood glue to the edge of the board, and hammered the molding into place. I continued to measure glue and nail molding to all three sides of the board. To secure the board to the old stand, I pre-drilled and added screws to the top, then filled the holes with wood fill. I also filled in the edges with wood fill. Once the wood fill was dry, I sanded it smooth. I applied a one coat of a dark stain with polymer polyurethane and allowed it to dry. Then I sanded using a fine grit sandpaper. To ensure the stand wouldn't fall over, I bought furniture straps. I measured and screwed one end of the strap to the TV stand, then measured and screwed the other end to the wall. Now the TV fits perfectly and my daughter can still use her old stand. 
To make the outside of the crate look better, I want to cover it with some thick jute twine. I'm going to start at the top of the crate and hold the end in place with some hot glue. Then I can just wrap it around the whole way down. I had this heavy old cabinet door though that fits perfectly. I want to start by making the foam just slightly bigger than the door. The best way to cut foam is with an electric knife. So I'm going to lay it down with the pattern side against the table and then I'm going to place the foam in the middle of it. I can lay the door on top. To hold the fabric in place I could use an electric stapler but I find it just as easy to use hot glue. I'm going to hold the ends in place and hot glue these as well. We're going to start today's DIY with a remote controlled light bulb. So we're going to take that little holster and we're going to glue that to the top with hot glue and, and then we're going to put in our light bulb. We're going to take a clamp so that we can add that on top in order to hold your lampshade. Take that finial piece, screw that back on so it's nice and snug. The next time you're at Home Depot, grab yourself two of their wooden crate, four of their hardware angled top plates, four legs in any style or design that you like. To begin, I'm going to take my crate, I'm just going to give it a little light sanding, then I'm going to use Hollow Hill from Country Chic Paint. Once I've done that let it dry, I'm going to take some plywood that I pre-cut and I'm just going to give it a stain color. Once I've done that and all my paint is dry, I'm going to go ahead with this pre-glued veneer edging and using a little mini iron. Iron, I'm going to iron this on around the edge of the plywood to cover the unfinished edge. I'm going to come in and do the sides of the veneer edging. Next I'm going to use some Gorilla Wood glue and then I'm going to be putting my wood piece on it. I'm going to clamp it and let this fully dry. Next I'm going to come in with my angle plate and I'm going to put those at all four corners of the plywood. Go ahead and screw on my legs that I bought. Once this is done I'm going to take my second crate and I'm going to add some Gorilla Wood glue to that as well and then I'm going to place it on top. Once the glue is set, take my second piece of plywood and I'm going to attach that to the top. Grab a can of black spray paint and a roll of rattan webbing. Grab one of those outdoor folding metal tables. Clean it up with cut some paper and tape to the table so only the frame shows. Give the frame a fresh coat of black spray paint and let it dry completely. Outline the top of the table onto the rattan webbing with a sharpie. Cut out the circle with some sharp scissors. Spray one side of the rattan with some spray adhesive. Spray the top of the table and let it sit for a few seconds until the surface is tacky. Place and press the sticky side of the rattan circle onto the top of the table. Place some heavy books on top of the rattan. Use some sharp scissors to trim the excess rattan from the circle. Hand sew a simple over under stitch around the perimeter of the placemats, but pause about two thirds of the way through. Stuff polyfill stuffing in between the two placemats to whatever thickness you want. Then continue sewing the remaining space with the jute twine and tie off with a knot at the end. Using the upholstery needle and yarn, sew the pom-poms at different points around the perimeter of the pillow. 